Hello everyone and welcome to the Really Reasonable Ribbon Military Braid video. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a military braid and use it to jazz up a pair of flip-flops or a headband. In the samples today I'm using 3 8 inch grain ribbon, although you can really use any style and width of ribbon that you want. An important thing to do is to seal the ends of your ribbon because you don't want the ribbon to fray and especially on flip-flops it's going to get a lot of wear and tear. So the easiest way to do that is to use a lighter and really just quickly run the lighter across the end of the ribbon. You can see that it beads up a little and melts and now it's not going to be able to fray. If you don't want to use a lighter, you can also use a fray check type product and just run some of the liquid across the edges. You'll actually have to wait for that to dry if you used a fray check, so keep that in mind. To get started, what you're going to need is loops on the end of the ribbons, and all you really have to do is fold it over. You want to leave enough room in your loop so that the other ribbon will be able to easily fit through there. So I fold it over and I use Fabri-Tac because it dries really quick and it's easy to use. Just going to squeeze a tiny little bit across the bottom. And hold it until it dries. So if you have a two-sided ribbon, like this side is solid and dots on the other side, whichever side is facing up is what you're going to get as the inside color of the weave. Um, on this particular one I did the solids facing up and the dots are on the outside. This time we're going to do dots facing up so the dots will be on the inside. So you're going to take your dark blue and feed it through the loop you made on the light blue ribbon. Now you're going to make another loop with the light blue and feed that loop through the dark blue opening and pull it tight. And really all you're going to do is go back and forth repeating that for the entire length of how long you want it to be. Each time you're going to pull the ribbon tight, not over tight because you don't want it to be puckery, but snug. And pull the dark blue tight. Now make the loop with the dark blue and put it through the light blue. And pull the light blue end. And once you get going, it actually goes really quickly. I'm just going to keep feeding loops back and forth through each other and pulling them tight. You are going to need to have about five times the length of ribbon of what your finished piece is going to be. So in the case of the flip-flops, I measure this to be about 12 inches, so you're going to want to start with at least 60 inches of ribbon of each color. The nice thing about this type of weave is you don't really have to cut your ribbon. If you have spools of ribbon or long pieces, there's really no need to cut it off. Just make sure you have enough. And if you just work off the long piece, there'll be no waste. So you would just keep going back and forth until you get to the length that you want. So we're going to pretend that we have the length that we want now because I want to show you how to finish off and you don't want to sit here and watch me leave for 20 minutes. So when you get to the length that you want, you can either use hot glue or your Fabri-Tac. I usually stop with a loop facing this way and I leave it kind of long for the moment. Everything else is snugged up. What I'm going to want to do is get some glue underneath this little loop, so that's what's going to hold it together. Squeeze some in there, and hold it down until it's dry. Then we're going to clip our ribbon here, and you can either use the lighter, or in this case I would probably use the fray check to seal the end there. On 
And this one, pulling it back so I have about three eighths of an inch left hanging out. And I'm going to cut this loop. I'm going to pull the piece out that we don't need anymore. It's a little bit longer than I want. I would seal the end. And I might stick a little glue under there too, just for added measure. And a little glue on the top. And we're going to fold this piece over. And hold it until it is dry. If you're going to make a headband, on the sample that I made for the blog, I actually did a woven headband as the base, so it would have a nice fancy pattern on the inside too. It's really not necessary. It's just if you want to do it, do it. Just as easily, you can use 7 8 inch grow grain, and I measured the length of the inside of the headband, and I added about an inch for either side to fold it over. Sealed the ends, and then I just laid a nice smooth film of the E6000 on there. It's hard to do hot glue on this because if you're not really quick it ends up being lumpy so I find the E6000 easier to use. Folded it over and then I just kind of folded the corners in to give it a little bit of a rounded edge. Then this actually I made for the flip-flop so it's not the length that I would need for the headband but just to show you on this part you could actually use hot glue if you wanted lay a little bit of hot glue down, stick this on, you know, add a little more hot glue and keep going until you're all the way around. And that's pretty much all you need to do for a headband. You'd have a finished piece. It looks pretty nice. I actually had made this piece for the flip-flops because I thought it looked good with the pink. And for the flip-flops, I always use the E6000 because it's such a strong glue. It smells really bad, but it holds really well. And I just layer a thick layer of E6000 on the flip-flop a little bit at a time. Press it on. And I'll actually use clothespins too to hold it because E6000 does take a little bit of time to dry. And just keep going around the same way, adding a little E6000. You know, fuss with it a little where it turns, you're going to have to make a little gathery type thing there. And keep going until you get to the other side. For this set of flip-flops, I made little bows to put on, and I actually sewed the bow on just because the flip-flop is going to get so much more wear and tear than a hair piece would. You could use an artificial flower. There's actually a lot of tutorials on the blog right now for ribbon flowers that you could make for my... Pink and brown flip-flops, I actually used um, four pieces of ribbon instead of just two like I showed you. If you're going to use a double layer, what I did was make my loop like I showed you for the other with the zebra ribbon. And then with a piece of black, I would come in. I had the end sealed, of course, so it won't fray. And I just cover over the edge of the loop and glue that together. That way it'll make the end neater when you start weaving. It'll just have a nicer look. And then you just weave the same way. I don't glue the two ribbons together because it would make it too stiff and hard to work with. And it's actually just fine this way once you get going. Of course I didn't glue that piece down either. I just held it there. And, you know, it takes maybe a little more finagling because you want it to look neat and you don't want them to look like they're not lined up with each other. But it really, once you get going again, it's, it's no different than the other. Just be mindful of trying to keep them lined up on top of each other. I was shooting for a zebra pattern for, for these flip-flops which I thought would look nice like that. Found these cool flip-flops. You can get flip-flops for a dollar or two in any discount store or craft store, so this is a great summer project.